Here are the top five underrated but awesome second level spells in D&D. Levitate. Screw this, I'm out of here. Okay, for real, Levitate is amazing. It's a concentration spell that lasts for 10 minutes and it can lift an object or a creature into the air. The target can't weigh more than 500 pounds and the creature can make a constitution save to resist the effect. Once levitating, the target can only move by pushing or pulling itself against something like the ceiling. If it does this, that movement is treated as climbing, so it's basically at half speed. Finally, when the spell ends, the target gently floats down to earth, so no lifting someone up and then letting them fall for massive damage, funny though that would be. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room here. This is an insanely powerful suck or save effect for just a second level spell. Blindness Deafness, Maximilian's Earth and Grasp, Web. Great second level control spells, but all of them give your opponent a chance to escape the effect by making a saving throw on their turn. Eventually, that creature is going to break free. Levitate does not work like that. Levitate gives you one chance to make that con save, and if you fail, you're out of here. Any melee enemy is straight up removed from the game. Werewolves, fire elementals, vampires, even gelatinous cubes. Once you've gotten 30 feet in the air, they are helpless. Hilariously, this even stops flying creatures. Wings or not, levitate holds you in place, and the only way to move is to pull or push yourself against an object. This is an insane removal effect for this level, letting you sweep the bad guy off their feet while your teammates deal with the stragglers. Or you could just all snipe away at the soon-to-be floating corpse from range. But levitate is also pretty insane to cast on yourself, too. You can hover above any melee attacks and shoot enemies from the ceiling. Cowardly, but smart. Exactly how a wizard should be. You can also levitate your friends out of trouble. If they're surrounded by enemies, you can airlift them out. And because this is forced movement, it doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. You are a one-man medevac helicopter. It's also an amazing combo with other spellcasters, allowing you to lock an enemy in an area of damaging effect, like, say, a flaming sphere. Finally, you can also levitate up to the ceiling and Spider-Man your way across. This is solid for bypassing traps or dangerous terrain in dungeons, or even getting the literal drop on your enemies without taking fall damage. Air Janassi even get it for free, meaning it's available to any class that wants it. All of that available to any class at level Level one, broken. Enlarge Reduce. Enlarge Reduce causes a creature or object that is not being worn or carried to grow larger or smaller for the duration of the spell. If the target is unwilling to get forcibly thick, they can make a con save to resist the effect. Enlarge doubles the target's size, multiplies its weight by eight, and everything it's carrying grows too. It also gives creatures advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, and their weapon attacks deal 1d4 more damage. Reduce does the exact opposite. Half size, one eighth weight, weapon attacks deal 1d4 less damage, and disadvantage on strength stuff. On the surface, this is a fairly decent buff. An enlarged fighter is hitting harder and making all their grapples and shove attacks at advantage. Also, you can mount a giant barbarian if it's your dream to ride a screaming half-naked man into battle. Slap on the mounted combatant feet and you're making attacks at advantage against medium or smaller creatures. Not bad for an Echo Knight or Bladesinger build. Shrinking enemies also does something, making them easier to grapple and reducing their damage, but Enlarge Reduce is not here for combat reasons. This spell is insane for its utility. Right off the bat, any locked door is not a locked door anymore. You can reduce it and it'll shrink to half size, giving you enough room to squeeze past. Then there's the famous flying gnome combo. As a small gnome, you can cast Reduce on yourself and then use Mage Hand to pick yourself up and fly yourself around. You can also shrink big expensive things to make them easier to steal and that's before we even get started on making traps. Why not reduce a boulder to one eighth weight, hang it from a rope, and then drop concentration the second someone walks under it? You can also, at your DM's discretion, cast reduce on a rock, and then give it to your barbarian to throw. Then you just drop concentration the second before the rock hits the target, and they're slammed with eight times more weight. It's up to your DM how much damage this would do, but it's fun to turn your barbarian into a human trebuchet anyway. Hacker Attacker is brought to you by NordVPN. <gasps> you! Hey, bro. I'm a cool hacker, and I'm in your computer. <gasps> oh, no. And now I'm gonna hack your sunglasses. Ah <gasps> Without a VPN, it's just so easy to get all of your online details and numbers and passwords and bank things. Wait! You can see all my plans! 
for the next D&D campaign. Yeah, but I can see all of the bank details and, and all your numbers and stuff online. That's so much work. Oh, I worked for ages on that TPK. I mean, balanced encounter. Wait, what are you doing? NordVPN, bitch! <laughs> no! NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the market. Available on tons of devices, keeping you and your internet browsing safe and letting you stream content from anywhere in the world at the click of a button. Subscribers can now get NordVPN at a massive discount and with one month free by following the link below. Visit NordVPN slash D&D Shorts or click the link in the description to get the discount deal and browse safely online today. Immovable object. First things first, this is a Graviturgy spell, and so only Graviturgy wizards get it automatically added to their spell list. However, in Explorer's Guide to Wildermount on page 186, it does say that other wizards can learn this spell, maybe through a found spell scroll or by learning from a Graviturgy wizard. Even if not though, all bards get it anyway via magical secrets, so it's pretty easy to get if you want it. And I gotta tell ya, you want this spell. Immovable object lets you touch an object that weighs 10 pounds or less and magically fix it in place. If it's locked in place in the air, it can withstand 4,000 pounds of weight. Any creature can try to move it by making a strength check against your spell save DC as an action. And if they succeed, they move it 10 feet. Okay, this is where things start to get crazy. If you cast it at 6th level or above, the DC to move it increases by 10, it can carry 20,000 pounds, and it lasts forever. This forever effect lets you do some insanely cool, flavorful things. You can create floating castles for the most badass party headquarters ever, for example. But this spell is really a powerhouse in combat. If you hit someone's plate armor with this, they're instantly frozen in place. They cannot move unless they use an entire action and pass a strength check and even then, they can only move 10 feet. You can even pull this trick off 100 feet away with a familiar, because the spell has a range of touch. This is a disgustingly powerful lockdown for no concentration. Basically, unless you're fighting someone completely naked who doesn't use any weapons, this is straight up broken. And if that weren't terrifying enough, there are plenty of other ways to horrify your DM with this spell. You see, you can set a password when casting the spell to deactivate the magic for one minute. This means you can cast it on a tiny pebble, deactivate the magic for one minute, and force a captured enemy to swallow it. Boom! You now have an immovable object inside a captured enemy. Now they cannot run, and if they don't cooperate with your questioning, you can simply grab them by both hands, pull, and tear them in half. Brutal, yes, but also an incredibly efficient method for getting information. Just remember to cast Dispel Magic after you've got the information to remove the effects. Unless, you know, you're evil. Magic Mouth. Okay, this spell is gonna blow your goddamn mind. Magic Mouth lets you store a message of up to 25 words inside an object. Then when a visual or audible trigger is met within 30 feet of that object, which you decide when you cast the spell, the message is spoken aloud. It's kind of like the Howler letter from Harry Potter. But here's the thing, this magical effect lasts forever. Your message can trigger infinite times as long as the triggers keep getting met. Also, it's a ritual spell, meaning it doesn't use a spell slot, but it does cost 10 gold to cast. Let's start with the obvious. You can enchant your armor to shout fuck you whenever anyone hits you with an attack. You can also set up some stones to shout a warning if anyone moves inside your camp while you're sleeping. You could enchant your wizard's hat to whisper a warning whenever anyone draws their weapon or starts to cast a spell within 30 feet of you. It can even detect if you move within 30 feet of a secret door or a hidden chest, as long as they have a physical presence, making sure you never miss out on treasure. It can be used to send a message that will only trigger in the presence of the intended recipient, so no one can snoop in on information, and it makes for great theft prevention by making your wallet scream if anyone other than you touches it. But wait, there's more. Because in the right hands, this is the most powerful spell in the game. That's because Magic Mouth lets you build a computer inside D&D. Now, I didn't come up with this. This was invented by Chemtalk on Giant in the Playgrounds. I've linked that thread down below if you want to read more. Basically, it uses one Magic Mouth to relay information with other linked Magic Mouths and pass information along. 
just like how coding works. This can be used to make working telephone networks, programmable illusions, emergency broadcasting systems, and basically a whole bunch of things that should not exist in Dungeons & Dragons. Sure, it's going to be expensive to set all that up, but when a second level spell can make goddamn internet porn, it's a damn good second level spell. Dragon's Breath. Okay, enough with the utility spells. Let's talk about killing things. Dragon's Breath is a bonus action concentration spell with the range of touch. It gives the target the ability to exhale magical energy through its mouth of a damage type between lightning, fire, acid, cold, or poison as an action. It comes out in a 15-foot cone, dealing 3d6 damage or half on a successful dex save. Firstly, picking the element of the attack is super handy. Damage, resistances, and immunities can really mess up an unprepared wizard or sorcerer. Also, any bonus action spell is automatically powerful. You can cast this and still have your action free to use the breath weapon if you cast it on yourself, or fire off a cantrip if you cast it on someone else. And using it on someone else is where things really get spicy. This doesn't have to be cast on a main party member. They probably have good uses for their actions anyway. No, you can cast this on your pet or your familiar. Now, sure, a familiar can't attack, but using the breath weapon is not an attack. It's its own special type of action, as confirmed by this tweet. Now you've turned your pet owl Barnaby into a flying dragon owl of death, dealing out waves of damage. This is great in the middle of combat, but it is devastating as a surprise attack. Enemies might be on the lookout for you, but a silent owl drifting overhead isn't going to draw any eyes. Then you can cast the spell on your familiar, through your familiar, and rain down hellfire. It also works great on wild-shaped druids. You now have a stealthy mouse who can sneak around and explode a 15-foot cone of fiery death on an unsuspecting target. And things get even crazier when you consider invisibility. Now sure, invisibility is a concentration spell, so you'll need a potion or another spellcaster to make this work, but the idea is to cast Dragon's Breath on yourself and then go invisible. Then you just sneak on up to a group of enemies and use your action to burp lightning on them. Because this isn't an attack, again confirmed by this tweet, this doesn't break your invisibility. You are now an invisible lightning ghost, terrifying your enemies who, as far as they know, are getting struck down by the wrath of God. Finally, Dragon's Breath is just a great way to get a lot of damage out of a single spell slot. Sure, Shatter is doing an average of 12 damage to Dragon Breath's 10, but if you can keep the spell going for a few rounds, it's going to outdamage any single blast effect you could get from a second level spell slot. Plus, it's just really fun to set people on fire with rats. Remember to check out the DM Sequel Weapon magazine, released every month with a ton of awesome items, races, spells, beautiful maps, and a ready-to-play adventure with loads more stuff besides. You can also play in the D&D games I run for the whole community there too. Also, remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and I'll see you next time.